Welcome back YouTubers, this is Omar from Near Mint Condition. Today we're going to look at the X-Men Classic Omnibus and what's in it, what it is exactly, and whether you need it or not. So stay tuned! I have to say, out of all the omnibuses that I own, this is probably the most unique one and probably the one that took the most work to get put together. It is freaking beautiful, especially if you're an X-Men fan. Now, what is X-Men Classic, or rather, Classic X-Men? Well, it was a series that started back in 1986. See, back then, we really didn't have collected editions like trade paperbacks and things like that. I'm going to show you the inside here, even though it's the exact same thing. But while I talk a little bit about this. Um, so yeah, we didn't have things like reprints and trade paperbacks. So if you wanted to get like a copy of Giant Size X-Men number 1 or Uncanny X-Men 94, you'd have to go and get the actual comic book and that even back then could cost you a couple hundred dollars so 1986 comes around they started this new line called classic x-men where issue one was reprinting giant size x-men however it was also chris claremont going back and writing a bunch of extras in there but they weren't just reprints that was the unique thing about the title there were also backup stories and those backup stories were very crucial to the x-men mythos like the bonding between jean gray and storm and Sabretooth and Wolverine's first fight. Even though it happened in a flashback, it happened before the Mutant Massacre. So let's take a look in here and see how it was all put together. So if you already have the X-Men Omnibus Volume 1, 2, and I guess 3, then this feels more like a special edition. Nah, I better not say special edition, because that probably reminds people of Star Wars episodes 4, 5, and 6, the Lucas cuts. <laughs> This is more of a director's cut. So think Aliens, the James Cameron cut, how much better it was. You want you two? Oh, you want three? And this is how they were able to put it together. It goes through a series of, well, let's see. This is the introduction by Ralph Macchio. Um, and then you have the original book, Giant Size X-Men 1, then the new cover. And it tells you here the pages that they added, the dialogue that they changed, and why they changed the dialogue. Of course, a lot of it makes sense when they changed the years. So yeah, Chris uh, Lane Wayne was the original writer, and Dave Cockrum was the original artist. But it, Chris Claremont went back in and did all the director's cut, the extra pages that were added to the original story. And his partner in crime was the wonderful John Bolton. And of course, the covers were all done by Arthur Adams. So these were the pages that were added in here, adding more to the storyline or sometimes fixing just editorial slip ups that happen from time to time. And then the backup stories, see like the whole thing with Jean and Wolverine seem to come out of nowhere when you first read these books, but it's all in here. This adds that extra layer to the characters. The friendship between Storm and Jean are also shown in one of these backup stories. Oh, I love that John Bolton cover. So yeah, the, the story is the one I'm talking about, First Friends. It's when Jean and Aurora first talk, and they become really close. You see this bond later on, like, when they meet back up during the Inferno Saga. All of a sudden, they're best friends, and you're like, when did this happen? There's just so many things in here that, to me, if you enjoyed X-Men, especially if you liked what you read in volumes one and two of the omnibus you need to read this book because it fills out all those empty spaces that were missing previously for example when the x-men go to the savage land for the second time during annual number 12 colossus meets up with this uh savage land chick that he already knew and you're like when did this happen well it happened in the backup story in one of these this also does the beautiful retcon. This is one of my favorite retcons of how they brought Jean Grey back. This tells the story of the Phoenix Force actually making her an offer to keep her alive. It's kind of morbid, but oh, it's so great. So this goes on for about 26 issues. This is the fight between Wolverine and Sabretooth, even though you don't really get to see Sabretooth. Written in that classic Chris Claremont style. And backup after backup, page after page. Here, here's an example of 
panels that were changed and why they decided to change them. Sometimes the dialogue was changed to make Wolverine fit the character that he is instead of the character that was originally written. But the backup stories are what really make this worth getting. They are a wonderful addition. Uh, they were previously collected in these tri paper bags, Volumes 1 and 2. But never have they ever collected the pages that they added into the X-Men comics. I think that's great. Now, uh, I believe this is one of them. I, Magneto. And there's another story, too, in here, in the backups, that... I mean, people build miniseries around these stories. X-Men 2, the beginning of the concentration camp and all that. It's basically taking the plot from Chris Claremont's idea. And it really dives deep into the character of who Magneto is. It made Magneto who he was. The beloved villain. A tragic hero, really. And just a few more pages of the backups. So these fit nicely in there. And they tell you which when they take place, the backup stories, like if they take place between issues 99 and 100, or, let's see, uh, this issue's backup story takes place between X-Men 121 and 122. Something that's awesome. It's great, you won't get lost. Now, do I recommend it to anybody that hasn't previously read X-Men? Probably not, because this probably won't mean that much to you. You're just getting the extras instead of the full serving. So, I think this is a wonderful addition. This is a wonderful companion to these books. So, if you already own these, definitely think about getting this. Because it is well worth it. There are also backup stories by Anna Santi and also Fabian Nicieso, one of my favorite writers. So, it's pretty cool to go back in here and read them. As they are supposed to be plugged into the story. And flesh out these characters more. And bring that whole X-Men family bondness together. Oh, I want to, this is one of my favorites, Moses Magnum. Like, I don't know where the guy just became overpowered, but within the pages here, it's revealed that it was Apocalypse that gave him those superpowers. And that's not in the backup stories. That's just part of the additional page that they added. And some more of the dialogue being changed and why. Another story where Corsair, how he finds the Star Jammers instead of getting a page or two of flashbacks. This one goes deep into how they all were slaved and how they formed a friendship and stuff like that. Wonderful penciled art by Arthur Adams. There's just all kinds of great stuff in this book. And like I said, most of the backstories are all done practically by John Bolton. Uh, but there are a lot of other artists in here that you'll probably recognize. For example, you have Rick Leonardi, Kieran Dwyer, and even Jim Lee gets in on the action. This is some of the earliest X-Men work that Jim Lee did. Probably did an issue of Alpha Flight and then he went on to do Uncanny X-Men 248. But this is probably his first X-Men work. And it's collected all in here. Just want to take a few seconds here to show you exactly what they did in the original reprints. So Chris Claremont came in here and wrote the first four pages. Which leads to this page right here in the original giant size omnibus. So I'm not really sure how you would go about reading this. My suggestion is to read the Uncanny X-Men omnibuses first, then come back and read this. Otherwise, you're gonna be reading the first four pages and then going back to the original omnibus until page 18 and then going back to this omnibus. And I think you get the idea of how ridiculous that would be. So yeah. Read those first, and then come back and read this, because that's how it worked. But yeah, that's what happened. They would put in Dave Cockrum's and Lane Wayne's original story in between the pages, and Chris Claremont added about nine pages or so of story and the backup. Now, it only went on for about 26 issues that they did the extras and the backups and the page changes. After that, it just became a regular reprint comic book. I haven't read some of these because I stopped getting classic X-Men after... Arthur Adams stopped doing the cover. But I do remember the classic Magnolia covers. So after that, they just give you the covers after issues 43. I'm sorry. Because it just became a reprint series. And I think it went all the way up to 116 or something like that. 
There we go. That's the final issue, 110. And then the cover that was supposed to be 111. This is one of my favorite covers. This is Adam Hughes after Paul Smith, where it's kind of switching the characters of Wolverine and Rogue. Here's some classic Magnola. And they also changed the title to X-Men Classics instead of Classic X-Men. It did start off as Classic X-Men. I guess maybe to cash in on the name up at the top and stuff. This was one of my favorite covers. I remember just buying this just for this cover. I know everybody loves Paul Smith's original cover. To I think it's 165. But this one right here is just so awesome. Yeah, so you get all the covers for the remaining of the series. And then pinups and other reprinted things that they've had. It's been the early years, which were also just reprints with no additional content. X-Men Rarities actually have that book. Just a just collection of just extras in the back. And then, yeah, the Magneto, I think this is Zero right before Fatal Attractions came out. This collects a couple, of, the couple of Magneto stories I was talking about. Now, this is really cool, the original layout for the cover by Arthur Adams. And more extras. Yeah, let's look at the binding. Let's see how well the book just lays flat. Yeah, it's it's got great binding on it. Nothing wrong with it. The pages are thick enough, like any recent Marvel omnibus. And telling you to buy a hundred and twenty-five dollar book is kind of ballsy of me, but. Honestly, if you've enjoyed these, like I said, think of this as the director's cut, a badass James Cameron Aliens cut. Because, I mean, who really enjoys the original theatrical cut of Aliens more than the director's cut? This was Chris Claremont revisioning a lot of the earlier Lane Wayne stories and then going back and kind of fixing his goof-ups. Well, I think I've talked about this as much as I can. So maybe I've been able to talk some of you into at least checking it out. And if you're at all interested in checking out these stories, these back at least the backup stories. Um, they, Like I said, they, they had two previously released trade paperbacks, which I'm sure are in the cheap right now, um, especially since this omnibus just came out. So maybe go that route and check them out. There's two volumes. Maybe try it out, see if that's what you like, and then get the omnibus because it's well worth it. So there you have it. As you can tell, I love this omnibus. This was a huge surprise to me that it came out. And you can probably tell that a lot of time and love and effort went into putting this one together. It wasn't like a whole bunch of stories were just glued together. Like for example, as much as I love War of the Kings, they literally just took the hardcover and a bunch of trade paperbacks and just flopped them all together. There wasn't any thought into putting that into an omnibus. So thank you for watching. I hope I was able to answer your question as to what was in this awesome omnibus and whether you should buy it or not. Um, if this is your first time watching the channel, please don't forget to hit that subscribe button and hit the like button if you like what you saw. Uh, don't forget to check out our weekly show. We come out with a new episode every Thursday usually where we talk about comic books, manga, video games, anime, toys, anything in the geek world. So again, this was Omar and thank you for your time.